I've spent 8 months creating a game and I went from this to this. Here's how I almost published it on Steam. It all started with a YouTube tutorial on how to make a cooking game like Overcooked. I followed along and made some cool burgers, but I wanted more. I quickly added more mechanics like serving food to people, cleaning tables and doing the dishes. I added some new recipes and counters as well, like an icing counter and a blender to make juices. I downloaded a cute little ghost from the Unity Asset Store and I already had a quite different prototype from what I started with. But it wasn't enough. I asked for some feedback on how my game looked and let's say I had a lot of room for improvement. So I changed the camera angle a bit, I added some decorations, better lighting and I tried to make everything cozy. I had the idea to make everything kind of supernatural so I got some 3D models that I tried to rig and animate the best I could and with that my little coffee shop in hell soon hosted ghosts, imps and other monsters. At this point, I started to work on a Steam page for the game and I even found a fitting name, Hellspresso. And then I changed everything. I gathered a lot of reference images for cooking games, coffee shops and kitchens, trying to understand what made them look good to replicate it for my own little game. I'm not an artist, so it was quite difficult to know exactly what to do. I ultimately decided to separate entirely the kitchen from the restaurant to bring the camera closer to the character and to try to stick to a color palette. I also created a round shape in Blender for the main character and I tried to make it cute. I also realized that it would be very complicated and time consuming to model and animate many different customers. After some iterations, I finally decided to buy a package with glowing ghosts that I think look really great and that already came with a lot of pre-made animations. I then focused a bit more on the actual gameplay and I wanted my game to be a mix between Overcooked, Plate Up and Diner Dash. First, I created a pantry and a fridge that can store multiple ingredients. These new ingredients allowed me to introduce a lot of new recipes with a varying degree of complexity. The game was starting to look cool, but something bothered me. My game didn't have a twist. I thought about how to expand on the hellish storyline because for now it was merely a graphical choice and it didn't really translate into any mechanics. And then I got this idea. What if you can switch to a magical kitchen prepare some mystic dishes. You would have two different kitchens to manage in parallel. So now in my game, some ingredients and some counters in your normal kitchen have their mystical counterparts in your secret magic kitchen. For example, a steak becomes rotten meat, a mushroom becomes poisonous, the sprinkles on your donuts become eyes, and your stove changes into a boiling cauldron where you can craft potions. I really liked this mechanic and even if it was a bit complicated to implement, I think it really adds some originality to the gameplay. Then I had another idea and I also implemented a soul catching mechanic. After their meal, customers are taking a quick nap and you can silently approach them and steal a part of their soul. These souls then allow you to upgrade your restaurant. Yes, because there are upgrades in my game. Let's talk a bit about how my upgrade system evolved. At first, you collected money from your customers and you could open a book between your shifts to purchase some upgrades. You could, for example, move quicker, get more tips, add tables or add some decorations to your restaurant. Then I decided to change the UI to an upgrade tree with a lot more upgrades in it. After some iterations, I'm quite satisfied with the results. And now you convert souls into upgrades and the money you collect represents your score at the end of each level. From just announcing the cash goal for the day, I moved to a panel where you can choose the recipes you want to cook. I later changed that to choose the ingredients instead. So now you can choose what to put inside your fridge or your pantry, as well as what counters you want in your kitchen and your menu adapts accordingly. You also have access to the customers that will come eat this day. Each customer has three favorite recipes to discover, so you can adapt the menu to satisfy everyone. The main menu attests of how much the game changed since the beginning, and also of how much I didn't know which direction to choose for it. 
For the main menu, I reused the steam capsule I had commissioned from an artist on Fever. I had to manually separate the character from the background in order to animate him to make the scene feel more alive. Then, I also added some particles, some post-processing, a parallax effect, and voila! After everything was settled, I had a month of hard work to prepare a demo of my game. So I did a lot of boring things, such as including a tutorial, adding sound options, keyring binding, controller support, and localization. At the beginning of this month, my demo was ready, and it was time. Hullspresso is currently participating in the Steam Next Fest of February 2024, and I already got a lot of feedback on how to improve it. The main things I want to do now are allowing the player to place himself the counters on the kitchen through a grid system and to customize the colors, to add more ingredients, more recipes and to expand the magic world, to add a local multiplayer mode, and to improve the overall feeling of the game. I'm planning on releasing the full game this summer, but for now and until mid-April, I'll be working on my second game project, for which I received some funding, so Hellspresso will have to wait for a bit. Thanks so much to everyone who tried my game and provided some feedback, it means a lot. If you haven't done it yet, please add Hellspresso to your wishlist on Steam, it helps a lot. So this was the story of how I almost published a game on Steam. The demo is still available if you want to give it a try. I hope you enjoyed this recap video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to follow my game dev journey. Thanks!